Welcome to UFC Connected. With back-to-back -back knockout wins in 2018, Darren the Dentist Stewart is starting to live up to the reputation he carried when he first signed up to the UFC as an undefeated prospect. After a slow start inside the octagon, which nearly saw him walk away from the sport entirely, the middleweight has now found a new gear and credits the support of those around him for his success. Darren still resides in East London, where he was born and bred, and that's where we check in with the dentist for Fighter Focus. We're in East London, E14. This is where it all begun, really. This is where the dentist came from. You never forget where you come from. I'm not one of them arrogant guys that get big and you don't see them again. I'm always here, you know, I'm giving back to the people and you know, showing them love, because they showed me love when I was growing up. I know him since he was a young boy. Yeah. <laughs> the last fight was OK. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good, it was good, man. Second round again. Yeah. East London is the place to be, man. This is where stuff goes down. The good, the bad. I'll never leave this place, you know what I mean? As long as I live, all my friends are here. <laughs> come on. I mean, I'm not going nowhere. I might fight abroad, but I'm here. You want to find me? Come to East London. I've been with Darren eight years. I've been with him since he started his MMA career. When Marlon came along, definitely was a, a reason to achieve our dreams. Handshake, kiss. He wanted to be a UFC fighter. He wanted to give his son the best, to be a role model for his son. They're like two peas in a pond. Yeah. They dance, they play, like they're just amazing together. Yeah. What's up? What's your name? Yeah, you're gonna play some football. Wanna play some football? Yeah. Show him your skills. He's three years old, looks like he's five. And um, the new one on the way, um, that's another boy. So the team's strong. This is Marlon's ghetto park. At the beginning, it was tough. It was a new journey for me, do you know what I mean? How am I gonna be a dad? and juggle training, but I always find a way to do it. Oh, nutmeg! <laughs> oh, go! If there's times where I feel like oh, I'm tired, I can't bother to go to work today, and I can't bother to go train today, I just look at him and say, that's what I'm doing it for. Do you know what I mean? I'm doing it for him. <laughs> <laughs> Come, let's go. We're going home. Fan 17 was a crazy year. I lost three in a row. We'd won a bunch of fights on Cage Warriors, and then we got signed to the UFC. Everything we was doing in the gym seemed to be working. We just couldn't find our room in the cage on the night. I came from a place where I was on a mad winning streak. So you're going from a mad winning streak to three in a row. Carl, baby K, Never been down that low. I was so close to giving up. People around me, friends, family said to me, like, you can't do that. We kept pushing him, telling him, you know, carry on. Don't give up on your dream, because that, that was his dream, to be the best in the world. Darren is very determined, and when he puts his mind to something, he will do it. And if it doesn't work out the first time, he'll try again and again. Even as coaches, we're all thinking what we're doing wrong, what we're missing. We just needed that one breakthrough and, you know, we could move forwards. I used to hear about people, uh, they get a sports psychologist, stuff like that. I used to be like, why you got a sports psychologist for? You know what I mean? Why do you need one? Just go in there and knock people out and go home. Get in the cage is nothing. It's the build-up. I can't do the build-up. That's what she had to work on me with. That's what I had to deal with. Once we got his head in the right place, it was just finding that little switch in the cage. <laughs> oh. Late May in Liverpool in 2018, a championship atmosphere inside the Echo Arena. Darren Stewart has kettlebells for hands, and if he lands them, people just seem to fall over. But he's not been able to make that happen so far in his UFC career. The atmosphere was crazy. Like, Echo Arena was big. And I didn't think I will be able to handle it. But all the work I've been doing, with my psychologist, it's helped me handle it. She's reached at the back of my head, done some mad thing, you know what I mean? And it's come to the front of my head and it's just got me to win in it, so. <laughs> oh, left, 
sends Spicy to his back, and now ground and pound for Stewart. Big shots for Derek Stewart. And that is it. Wow. There's a patient that gets drilled by the dentist, Darren Stewart. When he won, I jumped of happiness. I couldn't help myself. Just tears started running down because it was like an emotional time, like he finally won in UFC. Darren, the dentist, Stewart! That was emotional, man. I had to let it out, man. I try not to let it out, but I had to let it out, and it was just, it was everything I've been through. What's it meant to you to get this win in the UFC? Uh, everything, man. I mean, everyone that knows me, had a year last year, I lost three in a row. And, uh, all I want to do is get my name, but I deserve to be here. I deserve to be here. After me letting that all out, I just feel like a brand new person. Hey, Darren, Darren, you stand my hand. Hey, Darren, you stand my hand. This dude has thunder in his hand. Darren Stewart is a guy that if he can find space and find his shot, he can put anybody to sleep. Oh! Bird with the big punches. Oh! Stewart, always dangerous, though. Oh, now Bird got rocked! Whoa! This is the danger of standing in front of Stewart! Playing with fire, man! Oh! Bird goes down! Oh, the dentist rallies for the win! Darren Stewart! I put a lot of work in, you know what I mean? And the work's finally paying off. Takes one shot! He heard him and he found the finish! You can see the emotion on my face as well. Didn't cry this time. Darren, the dentist! I'm from East London, you know? I'm from Nisa, we've got a tough chin, that's how we roll. I think people now are starting to realise what Darren's capable of doing in the cage. You know, we've always known it. I think he's starting to show it now. Anyone out there knows him, my journey's been crazy. You'll probably think, why is he not giving up, do you know what I mean? How is he not giving up? How does he stay so strong? But the support I've got around me, you know? Darren Stewart, ladies and gentlemen! With every UFC fighter comes a unique skill set. And it comes as no surprise that signature moves have emerged as fighters continually return to a specific technique in the octagon. A select few have been recognised for their submission finishes as a result of their consistent ability to end the fight using the very same technique. Time to take five with UFC analyst Dan Hardy and see who's made his list of standouts. Every modern-day MMA fighter has submission skills in their arsenal, but over the last few years, some fighters have managed to specialise their craft and become synonymous with a certain move. Here are five of the best with their signature submissions. First up, it's Tony El Kukui Ferguson with the Darce Choke. There are so many facets to Tony Ferguson's game, but he's able to threaten his opponent no matter where the fight goes. He comes sweeping in with big winging shots and dangerous elbows, so a lot of the time he's finding people level changing and trying to take him down as he's moving forward, which allows Tony Ferguson to then start setting up his chokes. There's that dark choke again, sliding it through. He's rolling for it. This is his thing. Looking to finish right here. He got it. It is all over. That is his technique, ladies and gentlemen. He's able to slide the arms under the neck and get that lock up. When he gets that squeeze on, it's all over. Start to swim, there it is! There's the tap! He's able to catch it from so many different positions due to the fact that he finds people trying to wrestle him all the time because they don't want to deal with his other weapons. He's got it! Ferguson! Ferguson has really made the Darce choke his own, and it fits him perfectly with his lethal attacking arsenal. Ferguson! The clue's in the name with this next one. It's Brian T. City Ortega with the triangle choke. Brian Ortega is a lifelong Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner and a black belt under Henna Gracie. At 15 years of age, Brian Ortega was given the nickname T-City or Triangle City by Henna Gracie, his coach, because he was catching the submission from all different kinds of positions in sparring. Fast forward to today, and he's one of the most dangerous submission specialists in the UFC. Oh, and there's the tap! Brian T-City Ortega! There are no shortage of ways he can finish a fight, but his weapon of choice is the triangle choke. Because Brian Ortega's got such high-level jiu-jitsu, he's not only able to find the choke from many different situations, but he's also able to set up the choke from different situations. So as his opponent's moving around, he's got the knowledge and the foresight to start moving them into positions where he can set them up. If he can get the legs locked around the head and arm, it's game over. Classically 
train Gracie Jiu Jitsu Black Belt. They call me T City for a reason, baby. Triangle City. Coming in at number three is Ovin St. Pru and the Von Flucho. Little bit of history for you. In 2006, Jason Von Flew managed to secure the very first Von Flew choke that we'd seen against Alex Karolexis. He's out. He's Alex out. Karolexis wow. is out. Jason Von Flew. It was the first of its kind seen in the UFC, and that's why it was called the Von Flew choke. It's a very rare submission. There have been five secured in the UFC, and Ovin St. Pru owns three of them. The Von Flu choke basically is a counter to the guillotine attack when people hold the guillotine when the person's already passed to side control. Ovin St. Pru is able to recognize that moment, lock his hands together, and then drop his shoulder into the chin of his opponent. He's such a powerful athlete. When he gets that grip on his opponent, he's able to put a squeeze on people that they just can't resist. Stop, 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 stop. He's out! Hit it's all over! Incredibly, Ovin Supri was able to pull off two back-to-back, -back, the second one being against Yushin Okami. And I was fortunate enough to be Octagon side for that one, and as soon as I saw him penetrate for that takedown and get caught in that position, I was like, ah, here comes the Von Pru choke again. Oh, dear. He's got the Von Pru choke. Oh, wow! Can you believe that? Third Von Pru choke by Ovin Supri. Everybody knows if you ever find me in this position, nine times out of ten, I'm going to submit you. When someone can do it so consistently like Ovin St. Pru, there's got to be an argument for his changing the name to the Von Pru choke. The Von St. Pru. <laughs> At number two, Alexei Olenek and the Ezekiel choke. The Russian heavyweight is one of the most decorated grappling specialists in all of mixed martial arts, and he's made one of the rarest submissions in the sport, his signature move. The Ezekiel chokes are a relatively common submission in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but when you remove the gi and you put gloves on, it makes it incredibly challenging. It's like a rear naked choke position, but then the fist goes into the neck. As he squeezes with the additional inch of padding around the glove, he drives that right into your neck, and, and there's just no option. He got it! He got it! He got it! Whoa! The one thing that stands out to me about Olenek and the way that he puts this submission together is that he's so confident when he's got the position, he's quite willing to pull people into mounts. Now, that blows my mind. It blows the commentator's mind when they're watching him, because that's not a position that you give up but we've seen him do it several times in the UFC now, and his squeeze is absolutely incredible. He's trying it. Please, please, please. Oh, my God! You've got to be kidding me with this. From the bottom, from... I told you, he will do it from anywhere. <laughs> and my number one pick, Rowdy Ronda Rousey and the armbar. No one in the history of the UFC has been more recognized for a signature submission than Ronda Rousey. Ronda's historic rise to superstardom saw her go on a run of 12 straight wins, nine of which were finished using the armbar. Ronda Rousey does it again! Every single one of her opponents getting into the octagon knew that that was her submission and knew that that's what she would be looking for. But even so, they couldn't stop her. She's looking for it! She got it! it. And it's all over! Once again! The thing that made Ronda Rousey's armbar so special is that she was aggressive about it. Ronda Rousey went out and took people's arms home with her. She took them down, she got into a position where she could isolate the arm, and then she would hyperextend that until it snapped if need be. Oh, she's gonna break it! Oh. Oh. What was even more beautiful is how the armbar evolved and adapted over the years. She really made it her own but she also showed us different variations of the same attack that could be used in different scenarios. You go back to the Kat Zingano fight, that was an adaptation of the armbar. She realized that there was a scramble there, that Kat Zingano was coming out with all this ferocity, and she was able to subdue her and still isolate the arm. There's the arm! It is all over! Just oh like that! Oh my God. Wow! Even if Ronda Rousey never makes a return to the octagon, she'll always be synonymous with the armbar. Her crafting of that submission will stand the test of time. So Ronda Rousey, the armbar is all yours. Rome's Gloria Fight Center is widely recognized as the leader of Italy's recent rise on the MMA scene. Under the guidance of Italian veteran Lorenzo Borgomeo, this young team became a formidable force across Europe and are now making their presence felt in the UFC. We headed to the historic city to find out more about the team in Battlegrounds. <laughs> Thank you.
In this country, we have a big tradition in fighting. MMA is pretty new, but the tradition of fighting for Italians is huge. Some people call this the golden age for Italian MMA, but I think we haven't even started yet. Because of this gym, we're rising up. We have done a lot of noise in KG Warriors. We're doing a lot of noise now in UFC. I come from an age in which there were not many chance, possibility, opportunity. So everything that I haven't had as a fighter, I'm trying for my fighters to have. In 2016, we started, and the success happens pretty quickly. Alessio was the first fighter that went to UFC. When I entered UFC, I was the first uh, that ever trained in Italy. Fighting out of Rome, Italy, Alessio Manzo Di Chirico! This was a message for Italy that everybody can make this sport. Di Chirico looking to finish his fight! Wow! I think that I give some hope to Italian fighters. Fighting is my drug. I love fighting. Having a lesson in the UFC, I see him like something that I want to be. Train every day with him to learn something. When Alessio was signed to the UFC, it was a crazy, beautiful emotion. Because, you know, all of us saw him struggling and working hard. And when he got a recognition of his hard work, it was amazing. He has always been an inspiration and a big motivation for me. Alessio de Kirico taking on Oluwale Bamboche. Oh, big knee. The knockout for Alessio and for the gym was everything. The way he did, what he said was the interview. Alessio just a star, I believe. That was just a perfect night. He changed everything that night. In 2018, UFC signed Carlo Pedersoli. Just 24 years old, Carlo Pedersoli. He fought Brad Scott in Liverpool. Oh, nice body kick from Pedersoli. Carlo has a huge talent. Carlo! Oh, oh! Mentally, physically, technically, he has no limits. If you consider how young he is, really, he can do whatever he wants. He doesn't even know how good it is, which is good for now. And when Carlos signed with UFC, now everybody in Italy would like to be part of this team. When we first started, it was very small, and we like it like that. So far, we, we lost only two times in like more than 50 fights. So for us, it's huge. The best thing of Gloria team is that we are not too many people. He can work on me full time. He can work on Alessio full time. Lorenzo is a genius. Lorenzo has the amazing ability to find the right skill set for each fighter. He's not the kind of coach that will force you into a cookie cutter. He never tries to mold a fighter into something he's not. I know every single fighter is what they can do, what they cannot. So I have no doubt that they can all reach their maximum potential, you know, every single of them. We try to have a lot of fun outside. But once we're here, I try to teach them that the focus during training is crucial for the performance. Mano sinistra su, Valerio. Mano sinistra su. So the more we bull the more we will bull in the fight. There is nothing like Gloria in Italy. Every training is a bad training because everybody wants to submit you, want to put you KO because 
they want to say, mm, I, I'm the level to fight with Carlo and the level to fight with Alessio. So we have people very respectful, but very angry to, to show what they can do. Lorenzo's experience as a fighter made him realize what a coach should not do. We are so devoted, we are all focused, we are all hard workers, and we ended up having the best results an Italian team has ever had. We have proven that friendship mixed with hard work, dedication and preparation can lead to big things. We know that we can be the best team in Europe with time. I want as many belts as we can <laughs> for the Gloria team. I think Gloria guide the Italian MMA scene. We work very well. We are doing in the right way. Nobody is doing this in, in Italy. What we're gonna do is like, keep thinking that we are just starting, we're gonna keep winning, and we're gonna take over the world. Rome is famous in the world because it conquered the world. Now we want this one more time. It's only the start. That wraps us up for another episode. Get in touch and give us your thoughts online by using the hashtag UFC Connected. I'll see you next time.